Uh, tech, meantime, coming off a big week and Apple sitting around all-time highs, getting closer to a $3 trillion market cap. Our next guest warns, though, if Apple growth slows or inflation rises, valuation could wind up being a headwind. Martin Crockett's with us. Rosenblatt Securities Analyst has a buy. Target of 198 joins us at Post 9. It's good to have you back, Barton. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, we, we have seen some downgrades from some of your peers mm -hmm. on the street last few days looking at, like, iPhone purchasing intent. Is mm -hmm. that something you're watching seriously? Well, certainly, um, you know, we're keenly interested, obviously, in the iPhone intent. I think the thing that they have in their back pocket is a very easy comparison, right? So we all remember the supply interruptions in the December quarter. Um, we also know on the services side that a lot of that exposure is ad-driven, where the comparisons get much easier for people that would be comparables like Google and the ad market. So, you know, I think that it's a bit early to call that you need to be overly concerned about the growth returning to Apple. Um, and the share gains, I think, are sticky um, and I think have been underappreciated for a long time. So I'm loath to lean against that today. Um, but I think you need to be careful. I mean, valuation is on an absolute basis, not at a peak for Apple, but on a relative basis is. Um, so certainly at a tricky juncture. Right. How does inflation play into this? You mean inflation for them or inflation as a competing uh, asset class versus the equity here or what? Well, I, you know, I worry about inflation in terms of the consumer's pocketbook, right? So how much are they able to spend on um, this, you know, the luxuries? Now, iPhone is not really a luxury. It's a necessity, and it is the most important device of this economy, which I think is part of why the market has been so quick to embrace Apple. Plus, there's the call option on disruptive innovation, and we're beginning to see some of that potential with Vision Pro as people digest what could this mean, what could it be. Um, you know, and I think that the more we look at it, the more interesting it becomes. Where, what are the Wall Street expectations on that, on Vision Pro versus where, where reality lies for you? Well, our model has nothing meaningful in it for Vision Pro today. You know, this is really something where I think expectations were low heading into the event in terms of what it would do for the business. Um, but I think the opportunity is that we get more excited about it and that, and that there is more to put into the model around this. You, know, when, you also don't like the power cord hanging from the side. I don't like the power <laughs> cord hanging from the side. But what I do love, you know, is, you know, I'm doing a lot of traveling this week, is the opportunity for this to be your, your new computer screen, right? So, you know, as a road warrior, we're all tethered to our, you know, laptop screens. Well, what if this becomes your computer screen that fills up your entire room? Um, you know, I could easily see then buying that to make me more productive when I'm traveling, which I wouldn't be alone. There could be a, an interesting use case there. That's interesting. You know, I mean, watching them roll out Vision Pro, you think about here's a company that, oh, we wanted to get into financial services. Boom. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to start a media company. Boom. Uh, we want to we want to displace all of our chip suppliers in the Mac. Boom. I yeah. mean, doesn't that make you think they can do certain things at will? And I guess how do you avoid getting too bullish about them in that in that case? Well, I, I think that um, it does warrant a premium multiple. I mean, that call option opportunity and, you know, their execution and things like media has been excellent. Right. And look at them. They've got Major League Soccer and look who's coming to MLS, Lionel Messi. Right. So, you know, I don't know that models really anticipate much acceleration in things like subscription to Major League Soccer, which is not transformative, but helpful at the, you know, at the incremental margin. So, um, um, a lot to like about Apple, a lot you know, of reason to kind of give it the benefit of the doubt valuation-wise, uh, even in this environment. Is there an AI play here? I hear, I hear less about AI as it relates to Apple than, than all the other mega cap tech players. Well, I think that the question about where are your AI plays today is interesting, right? I mean, my, my colleagues who cover the semiconductors have had a great call on NVIDIA. And certainly, you know, the, the picks and shovels, you know, kind of plays, you know, as people build these large language models and do that hardware investment is here today, meaningful today. The services representation of that, though, is not so present, right? So, you know, we're all waiting for the transformative kind of opportunity to hit the numbers at Microsoft, which is covered by one of my other colleagues, um, and also at Alphabet, which I cover. You know, we think it will happen, uh, but I think, it, you know, it's easy to get ahead of your skis. In terms of Apple, um, you know, nobody's buying Apple for AI today. Um, and, you know, I do think that it is, you know, the device upon which AI will be accessed, but it is not discreetly an opportunity for them. Yeah, per our earlier discussion about timing on some of the right. benefits here on AI. Uh, Barton, thank you. Pretty Great. fascinating uh, on Apple today.